Do you think the British involvement was justified? Oh, I think so, yeah, yeah. I mean, when well, you think that, I mean, that would have been, now if it wasn't for us and the Americas and all the other countries, that would have been part of North Korea now. But like, they're very pleased about it, you know, South Korea. Just going back to Stalin's death, do you feel that affected British or Chinese morale in any way? Uh, I don't really, I don't think it affected our morale really, uh, but I'm not sure, you know, I doubt about the Chinese, I don't know. And, and did any of the troops have any contact with native civilians in Korea? Uh, not really, no. no I didn't, well, I didn't because, we, uh, like, you know, we we was up. There was and the only civilians we 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 knew was the uh, porters carrying all the heavy equipment and that sort of stuff. Uh, that was the only ones really we knew. Uh, and what was your interaction like with troops of other nationalities? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, Australians was we was pretty close to the Australians, think more than Americans. I mean, Americans thought they was a big, big, big man. Do you have any memorable moments from from Korea that specifically stand out in your mind? Uh, I suppose the uh, the Dallas ceasefire. I think you know when it was announced that the war was over. I think that was the best though, really. How did you hear the? What was it like to feel that the war was over? Well, it was good because actually, like we we was told, I think it was going to be in the morning. Uh, the, the ceasefire was going to be at eleven o'clock that night. So, oh, I think that's it. Oh, well, it's finished, like so, uh, great. So, two of the few of the braver ones got out of the trench and went up on the skyline. Next next minute, they got mauled, did they? Three, three of them was injured. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I should have done that. <laughs> Did you have any contact with the enemy in non-hostile situations? No. no. What happened um, once the Korean War was over? Where did you go from We there? went to uh, Egypt then, a canal zone, on a canal zone for a... Well, no, that's where I finished retirement. I was about four months there and then went home. Got the involved and then went into the TA. What was travelling to Egypt like? Uh, I was on a troop ship. Uh, it was okay, you know, that wasn't bad. It was, uh, it took about, I think it was about four weeks, I think. Then when we come home from Egypt to England, it took about a week, that one. Did you stop off at any other locations during that journey? Yes, when we was out, went out, we stopped off, went through the Suez Canal, stopped at uh, Aden, for, it was about, what, eight hours, something like that, so you could go ashore. Then it was, uh, well, was the next one? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, it's Sri Lanka now, it was like Ceylon, those. Uh, Colombo, we stayed there <coughs> for a few hours. And then uh, Singapore, stayed there. And then uh, we stayed at Kong for about six weeks. Do you have a favourite out of those locations you stopped at? Hong Kong, I think, was the best. Why? I don't know, it was, everything was cheaper. You got extra money for being there. So, uh, you know, it was quite good. Yeah. yeah. And what happened when you got to Egypt? Well, we was doing, <coughs> just protecting it from uh, the, uh, I suppose, anybody trying to invade it. But uh, we was just sort of do patrols up, up, up the side of the canal and things like that. What were the living conditions in Egypt like? Oh, that was pretty good. It was in tents, big, big tents, like, there were about, what, ten people, I suppose. That was pretty good, yeah, that was okay. And how about the food and water? <coughs> the food was okay, the water was okay, the biggest bugbear was the fleas, the flies rather. So was the weather and the insects and sort of the climate out there an issue as well? Oh, that was good, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, like, it was hot and sunny, yeah. What's it, what was a typical day for you like in Egypt? <coughs> uh, I suppose, well, I suppose you'd... Uh, Get up, go to breakfast, then come back. You might have drill uh, on the square. Then you have, or you might have a field craft where you know, uh, out, out uh, on schemes, like in the desert. 
for then uh, you might do that for what three or four days, <coughs> which is it was pretty good really, ain't the desert? Then before you come back to the camp, you go on the like the Red Sea somewhere on a beach and stay there for about two days, swimming and things like that. So that's pretty good. Um, and after Egypt, um, whereabouts did you come home? <coughs> when? Yeah. Uh, well, it was in the I think it was May fifty. 54 we came, we came on. So you were still in the army at that time? Or was well, yes, no, you come home, then you, uh, then you, after that you were, you were at, I was at the tower, and you come back to the tower, we stayed in Liverpool, come back to the tower, <coughs> went home to, for about three or four days every night, then got, I did my papers and that was it, we was home. So because you mentioned the TA, training TA office? <coughs> yeah. You had to do three years in the territorial army when you come out the my the uh, regular services. Where was that? Uh, <coughs> Ballum. Okay. We stayed at the Ballum. Well, we used to go down for two weeks to down at Aldershot near Aldershot, training. Why was it after your national service that you had to join the territorial army? Well, it was just the law. That's all. Do you know anything about the government's motivations for that, or? Uh, not really. I think what it was, they wanted to keep people fully trained, in case like the Russians mm -hmm. like, attacked or something like that. That's so did like. you have more training in the TA? Yes, yeah, yeah. And that took place at the tower? No, that took place uh, at ba uh, Ballard. I mean, it wasn't a great lot of training, but it was a... But most of the training for that like, was when you went, some, you went to the, the two weeks, that was it, we're training, and sometimes you just go for a weekend training. So. Could you tell us in a bit more detail about some of those training camps? Uh, yeah, it was a. Uh, used to sleep in a uh, hut. Uh, you might go on the rifle range, say, for a few hours, come back, do drill, like slope arms, you know, marching and things like that. Uh, then you might have a lecture on on, a, on something like the regiment or something like that, things like that. You know, it was a, it was fully occupied, but it was, it was more, more better than when you did it at the tower because you'd been been in it two years, so you knew what was what it was. You know. What was the part you most enjoyed of the training? I, I, me, I liked the rifle range, and also the drill. I used to like marching with a band as well. That was good. Yeah, I mean, we still do it now, but we've done so much. <laughs> How about what you least enjoyed, or that was most challenging? Polishing. <laughs> Polishing. <laughs> because in those days, like, all the equipment, all the webbing, belts, and it all, you had to uh, blanco it, different, like green, like green, like, I suppose you call it chalk or something, and want it to be done every night, and dried, and things like that, but I don't think you've got that now. What was your role at Ballon? What position were you in when you were at Ballon? Well, I was in a single platoon there as well, yeah. What was your duty at Ballon? What kind of things did you have to do? Well, I mean, it was only for a uh, weekend, so it was just, the, you know, it wasn't really, or a night, if you went there for a night, it was just a little bit of drill and that was it. It wasn't a great lot. And so after your time at Ballon, um, did you leave the TA then? Yes, uh, yeah. Aside from um, sort of it being compulsory to do those three years, were there any other motivations around you leaving the TA? No, no, you could stay if you wanted to, but I, I left because I, I was uh, going to get married, and so uh, yeah, that was more uh, more interesting. <laughs> um, are you still involved with the TA or the um, Fusiliers now? <coughs> well, only the uh, association, Fusiliers Association, yeah. What did you do with the association? What's your what kind of things does the <coughs> association do? <coughs> well, we uh, have a parade, uh, like we go, like we go to uh, like uh, some places like that. Uh, <coughs> we had a big one here uh, at the start with the Korean to commemorate the Korean War. Uh, which was you took the salute where we marched round. 
things like that. Uh, <coughs> they do. <coughs> uh, what else? Maybe that's it, really, I suppose. We, oh, they have it nights at the tower, like rather Friday, about four a year. We just sort of reminisce and things like that. That's about it, yeah. Are there any good stories that come out of those reminiscences? Well, they are. I'm not going to can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say you've gained anything from your time in the army? Yes. I would hear a boy come out a man, as they say. Well, no, it's true, I mean. Yeah, you learn to fend for yourself when you when you're in the army. So you uh, you know, I mean, before I was in the army, I wouldn't think of uh, ironing a shirt or or doing anything like. That. But now, I'd like, uh, it's just second nature. I'll do it. <laughs> and what do you think about reintroducing national service? Do you think that would be potential? Uh, I think I mean it do it, it do the youngsters good, but I can't see it happening really. Uh, Unless it's a war or so, well, it's, you know, I don't know, but... <coughs> um, throughout your time in the army, what kind of changes did you observe in the TA? In the TA? I think, really, it was just, It was the same as... Uh, like, I mean, all the weapons was the same as the First Second World War. I mean, no, no uh, there's nothing different, really. The radio sets was the same, but uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, it wasn't uh, much different, really. <laughs>